Since you folks really enjoyed my first reaction video to Forged and Fire, uh, maybe I should call it more like analysis or over analysis, potentially. Anyway, we're gonna do another one. So here's top 14 catastrophic weapon failures from Forged and Fire. And I haven't watched it yet, so I'm just gonna jump in fresh and we'll see what happens. How about that? Oh boy. Well then. And you know what? This is something that I'm I'm just a little confused by. Why do they never wear any protective gear? Not what your companies do to them. Oh boy. I just want you to look at this. You know, anyone who's ever said that I abuse swords way too much, look at this <laughs> and tell me that I'm hard on swords. <laughs> tell me that again. This, this is hard. This is crazy. Like that is a solid piece of hardwood that is being chopped directly, like vertically, perpendicular to the grain. Not at an angle, nothing, just, just full on smash it on there and smash it on there hard. Yeah, that's, that's extreme. And honestly, this is where I think this is, this is pushing it. Like this is going above and beyond what you would be reasonably expecting on the battlefield historically. Because even if you, if you clash swords together if you parry, if you do a static block against a powerful opponent strike, if you if the sword clashes against a shield or against armor or a helmet, it's all going to be hard impacts, of course, no doubt about it. But at least there's a little bit of give. You know, there's a person behind it. A person moves. It's right on the ground there. There's there's no way for it to go. This I think is a bit overkill. In fact, I'm surprised that they didn't break every blade on this with the ice. I understand ice tests because of their simplicity. You know, it's it's a free target. You just freeze some water and you put the block there and you, you have at it, which is, oh damn, massive delamination there. This, by the way, is something that I often find a little strange on Fortune of Fire. A lot of contestants that I've seen chose to do pattern welded steel sometimes they required it sometimes they require them to forge weld different pieces of steel together i think that's what happened here uh, where you you have to work with just you know random pieces and you have to weld them together and to make a blade that's one thing but sometimes they for the the final round they decided to make a pattern welded blade which they didn't have to they thought they would get an edge no pun intended in terms of aesthetics but that's really, I don't think I've, I've seen one that won just based on aesthetics necessarily. If it's a tie between two different blades that both performed equally well, then yeah, sure, the pattern welded one might have a bit of an edge, but there is just too much risk, in my opinion. There's so much that can go wrong with it. Delaminations can really mess with the blades. It's extra risk for really no benefit other than it looks cool. I mean, I shouldn't say no benefit. You can come up with a good pattern welded blade that combines different types of steel that kind of balance out the pros and cons of hardness versus toughness, but it's, it's a bit of a risk. That's a big sheep. Okay, so where's the failure? Oh, there it is. Oh, I didn't see the, the piece of blade flying at first. Okay. Yikes. Let's look at that again. So, there comes a swing. Mechanically, it's a little bit odd how he goes from like almost a diagonal downward cut to an almost horizontal, but I think the edge alignment is actually good. It might be slightly off, but no, not really, not much. No, this, this was a fault in the blade. 
maybe some kind of impurity at that point that made it more likely to fracture in this spot right there. And then, yeah, boom, there it goes. Blade starts flying. That's unfortunate. And I have, you know, I have a lot of sympathy for the, the contestants here because... I mean, I've talked to bladesmiths and I've seen their work in action and it's, there's so much that can go wrong. Even if you know what you're doing, even if you're experienced, sometimes you have just random bad luck where you have some inclusion that you couldn't see in the blade or some kind of impurity or, or sometimes the tempering just goes wrong. Well, not the tempering, the hardening usually. And it can happen to the best of them, basically. <sighs> Like he's really putting some gusto into those swings. Like that is, that is a hard, hard hit. So any time with such a hard swing, if you hit something that the blade gets stuck in, there's a high chance that, you know, something twists, something misaligns. And if anything is slightly off, then you have enormous forces just torquing on that piece and twisting it in, in a bad way. Oh, there it is, yeah. I wish there was a slow-mo view of that, but there really isn't. I mean, here, but that's from the moment of impact, so it's kind of hard to see what's going on. Oh, look at that. He does a horizontal swing, but right before impact, it, it seems to twist a lot. So he does a horizontal swing which should be, you know, it should ideally start here. I talked about that in the other video where consistency is key. So ideally, if you do a horizontal cut, you start in a horizontal position. I'm really regretting the choice of frame here. You start in a horizontal position and you finish it the same way. So this is good edge alignment. Whereas if you, if you change it in the middle of it, that can lead to a lot of problems. And it looks like right here it's hard to say because the shutter speed is way too low so it makes it all blurry but it looks like right before the moment of impact it goes from horizontal to like almost vertical it looks like so i think the the bad edge alignment here is what killed it it might not have happened otherwise again it's hard to say for sure i could be wrong especially considering how blurry the the motion is here so it might look a lot different than it is, but I'm not sure that was really the, the bladesmith's fault here. Hard to say. Oh. oh boy. Okay, let's take a look here what's going on. Okay, you can see it there. That is the weak spot. It's very hard to judge edge alignment from this angle. It looks fine to me. But you can just see that's the weak spot right there. You can see here the way it's fractured, that irregular fracture there. There's something wrong with the blade. What is happening? <laughs> He's batoning the knife into a copper pipe. I mean, okay, it is copper. It's significantly softer than steel, but... Oh, I don't think I consider that super reasonable as a test copper pipe like i mean i get it it's supposed to really push the the blade to the limit it's just some of those tests are so harsh and, and sometimes they do break multiple blades in fact sometimes the finalists even both have their their weapons damaged i think it's i can see why they do it because for one if something fails it's more interesting for the viewer. It's, you know, more spectacular. Also, if something fails, it's easier to rule it out because the worst situation on this show is if you have two blades that perform equally well, and then you have to somehow decide. Now, my problem with that is sometimes I've seen them in this situation where both blades pass all the tests with flying colors, and then they pick one over the other subjectively. At least that's what it, what it seemed like. I would prefer if they added another test as a tiebreaker. You know, maybe even ramp it up yet even further and just go crazy until one of the two gets damaged. Um, 
It's kind of ironic after I basically criticized the tests for being too harsh to say, yeah, they gotta go even further. But that's just in the case where you need a tiebreaker. Or maybe you can do a more in-depth analysis about how they handle. Anyway, it's a pretty tough thing to judge a blade accurately. Oh, damn, did you see that? It just chopped a piece right out of it. Boom, yeah, there it is. Now, bone is a reasonable test medium, I will say that. With the exception that an old dry bone is way harder than living bone. Because living bone has, it hasn't calcified yet. It, it still has, you know, blood and nutrients going through it. And it's nowhere near as, as hardened as this would be. Yeah, this is also unfortunate because he hit the same exact spot. You know, first he, he knocked this big chip out of it and then he hit the exact same spot again, which is what, what I talked about just earlier uh, in, in a video about edge repair. If you have a large chip in it or a tear of some sort, this is a weak spot because now the forces are concentrated or channeled into that crack or or neck or whatever other you know significant blade damage you have that makes it way more likely to fail so this is this is kind of unfortunate this is one of those blades that i feel could have possibly moved on i mean you have to eliminate contestants right you have to be somewhat harsh because if everybody passes, then how, how are you gonna make any decision, right? So there's that. Oh, this is another really painful test because I know how hard Antler is. I've worked with it before and it's tough stuff, especially if it's on a chopping block like that. It has nowhere to go. You just mercilessly hammer the blade into that hard material without any give and yeah this is this is where stuff like that happens again if you think i'm hard on my blades and my tests watch this this may change your mind this may make you think that i i baby them yeah again uh, bone is a, a, an appropriate test medium except that these are huge animal bones and the way they're fixed there without anywhere to go that's that makes it way harder on the blade only epoxy holding this you made them. fair enough if it's just epoxy that is a bit of a design flaw now of course you have to always think about the time constraints that they're dealing with but if that's all that's holding it in no pins or anything yeah it's just way more likely to to fail oh a horse skull I mean, again, this is seems like an appropriate test medium because, of course, they would face cavalry in battle. The only problem is, again, this is a a dried skull as opposed to living. Now, in some ways, it might fracture more easily because it might become brittle, whereas the living bone has more toughness. So you might encounter a similar issue as with wood, where it gets stuck. You know, it penetrates to a certain point, and then it twists, and then it may break. So there's there's always something that can go wrong. But yeah, this is a hard test. Whoa! If it fails at the hilt, then there was probably an issue with the shoulder, because if you make the shoulder where where it transitions from the tang to the blade, if you make that shoulder too square. That's again where forces can be concentrated. You want that to be a little curve because a curve will distribute the force evenly. A corner will just basically channel it right into there. Give it a little bit of rounding as opposed to like a hard 90 degree corner. It's gonna be more durable that way. Oh. Wow, on a ballistic dummy. With bone, but still, let me see. This is a nice slow-mo, so we can maybe see what's happening there. Ah. His edge alignment is good. Good cut. 
the way he does it. The blade is already bent, it looks like. You can see here, there's already a bit of a bend in it. And then he hits, it looks like he hits about where the center of that bend is. Now with the way it flexes here, that tells you that the edge alignment isn't perfect, probably. Unless it's too dull, that can happen. If the blade is too dull and it meets something, the, the object will start to turn it because the blade, like the edge can't bite in. It can't get any purchase. So if it gets deflected like that, then you have a lot of forces acting on it. Then it can break. So, yeah. It's a good cut. I like that one. Like smack him in the face with the she with the scabbard and then boom, right under the chin. That also shows that the edge is probably not good enough. Because this should have gone deeper. Anyway, there you have it. More weapon failures from Fortune Fire. These are pretty interesting to discuss. Because there are little observations you can make here and there. Again, it's Difficult to just go by video footage without being there. Always keep that in mind. But um, yeah, I hope you found it interesting, entertaining, and thanks for watching. Have a good one, folks.